All right, so let's carry on. Our next one should be another quick hitter, so I'm just gonna speed through it. Any additional details, I'll just put in the description. Suppose V equals zero and the vector potential equal A naught sine KX minus omega T in the Y hat direction, where A naught, omega, and K are constants. Find the electric and magnetic fields and check that they satisfy Maxwell's equations in a vacuum. What condition must you impose on omega and K? All right, so what we know, we know the fields, the negative gradient, negative time derivative, and the curl. That should look familiar, so all we gotta do now is simply chug it on through. E gives us A naught omega uh, cosine KX minus omega T Y hat. B, uh, for the curl, we just need the uh, D by DX component. Uh, I think we've done enough curls in this class. And what we see is that we get A naught K cosine KX minus omega T Z hat. All right. For both divergences, uh, the derivatives of the constants, so they are zero. Hence, uh, D or the divergence of E equals zero and the divergence of B equals zero. Okay, that makes sense. No big deal. Um, we had to use that kind of lightly because well, when, when in actuality, everything just kind of cancels and they're constant, so like, quote, constant. So be aware, they're good to go. Um, things will cancel accordingly. So uh, furthermore, uh, um, go back to the definition of divergence while it's in my head. DY for E, for example, D by D, D by DY on the cosine, which is a function of X, that goes to zero, so it doesn't actually cancel. For B, D by DZ of a function of X is a constant, so it cancels. Again, no big deal. Now for the curls and like Maxwell Ampere and Faraday's Law, those things we need to take into account. So does D by DX of the Z hat for the magnetic field, the curl, give us the negative time derivative of E? Well, plug it through. And uh, after cancellation with the minus signs, we do indeed get the same thing. All right, directions match, good to go. Um, so, or yeah, and then here we get the same thing. Does that match? Okay, it does, but we need to provide the statement that K squared equal mu naught epsilon naught omega squared, which is equal to omega squared over C squared, or uh, from chapter nine, what we saw was that omega was equal to K or CK, where K was the wave number. So, uh, yeah, everything holds, and this is exactly what we expected from the work we've done in Chapter 9. Good to go.